Hello, so I had a question from Mantha on Discord about um, gas mask strap types and if I could do sort of a video comparing them. Now obviously I don't have every kind of gas mask strap or harness type available, but I thought I could give a good selection here of the ones you're going to commonly run into and, you know, speak a bit about some of the other variations of them as I get to them. Now, bear in mind, with basically all gas masks, sometimes you'll get the straps in rubber, sometimes in fabric and things like that. So I'm not going to try and, you know, find two examples of each mask with the, you know, one with a rubber harness, one with, um, you know, a fabric, if they were done in both kind of thing. So let's start off with the one that's not even straps. So your helmet hood style mask, you know, like all, lots of the Soviet masks had. Quite a few of the Axis World War II civilian masks had these. Now, what I will mention on these um, is some of these did actually have straps on in the sense that you'd have basically a kind of belt style strap there and the idea was that you could further tighten the mask around the back of your head or whatever. I suppose they could have done it there as well, but I've not seen any like that. But yeah, so to get this out of the way with first with these stretchy swim cap style sort of hood helmet masks, yes, um, you could get these as straps on sometimes. Um, but that was a thing that pretty much died out. They were just done in different sizes of stretchiness. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're not even really straps. But I thought I'd include it in the video just because people would say, but what about if I didn't? So there's that. So the next example I'm going to go to is the kind of one the French really like to do on a lot of their masks. And this is where you actually have hooks um, that are held by tension that uh, tighten the mask on. So rather than having the harness always on on the mask, you have your adjustable straps either on a five or six headpiece harness and then on normally two of the bottom straps you then have a hook which hooks over part of the mask and the idea there is basically that the mask is held on by friction but you can get the straps pre-adjusted and then you do a bit of stretching to get it over there again I've seen these in plasticky and metal designs um, the only problem I can actually see of a design like this is I imagine if it's quite a tight fit and you have to keep stretching it like that every time you put the mask on, um, I imagine you could actually tear the rubber quite easily um, doing something like that or tear off the little hooks. So I can see why lots of nations don't use that design. It's not actually a bad design, but um, it tends to only be some French masks that seem to still do it. As in it was very popular, um, you know, again, in the World War II era. So let's go on to the more World War II style designs now that you don't get as much. Now this Canadian C3 has basically the British style design on it. So with most of the British type masks before the S10 you'd have basically a system that works a bit like um, an adjustable watch strap on a fabric watch strap. Um, so it's this kind of system where you pull a bit through a loop and then you tighten and all, you know, loosen the loop to adjust the um, you know, length of essentially the strap. Again, the C3 kind of combines this with a bit of a clamp, but this is actually the bit here, which is the um, tightness factor. Quite often these are also done with an elasticy kind of strap system. So the idea was, I guess you had a bit of give in it, so you'd probably put it a bit tighter than it needed to be. Then you'd stretch the um, straps as you put it over your head. Again, I am not very fond of this system. I think out of all of the strap types, this is the one I hate the most out of ones that's on a lot of masks. Because you have to generally take the mask off and spend a bit of time playing about with this sort of bit and adjusting it um, to actually get the straps as you want them. Um, so it's kind of annoying. So it's obviously, you have to basically really spend quite a bit of time adjusting the straps to get it to fit you um, when you first get a mask in this system. And then sometimes if you say, get a haircut or whatever you might have to um you know readjust these every time sort of thing so i'm not a fan of this system um because for example although i kind of like the s6's face piece my s6 has a, um, a sort of tightening system very similar to this um, which i really don't dislike another type of world war ii strap system which i actually think is better is just this simple pull through type one so where you basically just pull and loosen the straps using a you know a classic buckle system. The disadvantage to obviously something like this is the fact that um, you know that there's nothing holding it in place as much. With the other system, it's kind of looped on. Um, 
but this is a much simpler system. I think this one is basically just designed that you fully loosen most of the straps, like with a more, more, more modern mask. You know, you loosen them as much as possible because your buckle bit is basically there for it. Um, you know, you loosen all the straps as much as possible, you put the mask on, you tighten them till they're comfortable, and then you'd only really loosen the bottom two straps, which is basically done with modern masks. Obviously, pretty much any of these designs can be done in five or six piece head harness designs as well. Um, and what's worth pointing out is the Soviets had a strap system they used to use on some of the masks like this. Again, it's not just on Soviet masks, but the GP4 and the MM1 are good examples of this, where you'd actually have multiple straps, but you'd only ever tighten the bottom two because they were all joined together in the harness. So basically they crisscrossed over and then you'd pull both of the bottom ones and it would tighten all the straps at the same time. So that was quite a good system, but again, sometimes they get a bit tangled and things like that. With nearly all these systems, there are drawbacks and, you know, pluses to all of them. Right, now let's go to the more modern system of mask strap. That I think is basically, if you have this in rubber or, you know, fabric, this is the system that always wins out. So normally now, we most of the masks tend to have a big skull cap kind of thing at the back, rather than simply just having, you know, um a bit of rubber or fabric that's crisscrossed because it just gives better head support. And these you can have in six or five piece, but these are basically where every one of the straps is just an adjustable sort of modern buckle system. So again, it works via friction, but it's designed, you know, so um, it's got a bit of a roller type thing on there. Some masks will have the thing a bit like the S10 has where you have, uh, lift up a bit of plastic, you pull it through, then put the plastic back down to clamp it. But in general, the reason why these are popular systems is they are easy when it's actually on your head to tighten and loosen the straps as needed. Um, some of these have, again, will do the thing of having the bottom two straps having a faster to adjust system on them. Um, this one is actually more complicated to show you like this than it would be if I was wearing it. But um, the point is with this is that this is the system most mask manufacturers tend to use now something along these lines whether it be rubber you know five piece or six piece head harness is basically to just have this system of you know straps where each one can just be pulled through without too much messing about so you would for fitting the mask you'd basically put the mask on with all the straps fully loosened and then you tighten them as needed till you've got the good sort of you know fit to your head and then normally after that you'd only ever tighten and loosen the bottom two straps to take the mask off. With most masks like this when I'm wearing them I actually just when I take the mask off fully loosen the bottom two because they normally if they're well made have a system so you can't actually pull the straps fully through and then with when the other straps are obviously adjusted you can then just quickly pull the mask on tight and take the mask off um, you know untighten fully. Um, and that's really the only bit you're going to need to adjust. Again, there's a bit of give in these, but it's not as bad as the old elastic -y straps. And like I said, they're, they're, there's lots of different designs that can be used on masks, because um, I'm sure some people know of some really weird designs as well. Like, obviously, um, with the head wound type masks, some of those are actually where you tighten the mask around somebody's neck, um, because it's designed so um, if they have a head wound, you can't necessarily tighten the strap around somebody's head. So they tighten around the neck, for example. Um, and that's before you even go into, you know, like things like hazmat suits, where it's a positive pressure suit, if we're just talking about masks themselves. But yeah, hopefully I've answered your question with a video like this. I can't think really how much more I could flesh out a video like this. Um, because again, lots of the straps are, um, you know, just variations of buckle type systems that you'd have on a watch strap, for example. But as said, I think, for myself, a six-point head harness like this is generally the best system. Um, obviously, you can have better quality control on some of the bits, you know, like these bits for pulling through and loosening the straps. But in, in general, I like six-point head harness systems where you just pull through and can release a strap by, you know, using a buckle. Um, because generally with those designs, you don't have something that's going to rip due to friction, um, which is, again... Oh, that's a mask design I've not actually covered in this video. Sometimes you'll have a system like this on older masks, but it uses kind of... I can show it on the French one again, actually. It uses the sort of rubber with kind of um, ridges on it. So the idea is that with friction, um, 
you know, you use that. And I, the reason I don't like this system is as masks get older and the rubber wears, adjusting these straps can often lead to the mask actually breaking. Because this system, as the mask gets older and more brittle, you know, having to put a bit of tension on the rubber or the harness to pull these through, you know, so they lock back in place, puts more pressure on it. So I generally dislike this system. Again, I've seen it done better and worse on various masks, but um, I generally dislike adjusting a mask using the ridge sort of system. I prefer it using just a buckle that keeps it in place. Um, because as I said, the amount of time, you know, if you get an old mask like this, you have to be so careful if you adjust the straps because obviously the whole system is basically getting the, you know, strap to go through each layer of the buckle without putting too much force on it. And if that's brittle there, that will be where the point of weakness is for the mask. So hopefully you found this video interesting and it's answered your question. Um, I imagine because this isn't a short, YouTube isn't going to send it to people properly. But there you go. Um, that's most of the types of straps I can think of on various masks I own. Um, but yeah, the rubber ones and the ones like this are my least favourite. Again, I don't mind this system at all to show you on an actual watch strap, because on an actual watch strap, you're normally only adjusting, say, one particular bit of the strap to pull through, for example, like that, and then tighten. Whereas if it was, um, you know, on a gas mask, you're doing that six times, and some of them can be quite flimsy little things. Um, but yeah, I just... I don't mind that on a watch strap itself, but that same system I don't like on gas masks. The system I like on gas masks is generally the, you know, five or six point head harness where each individual strap can be pulled through. And then, say for example, like the FM12 and the CT12, that has a system where on four of the six straps you've got um, the sort of reinforcement buckles to make it harder to move them. So once you've done your top four straps you basically tighten those and don't play about with them anymore unless you need to then the bottom two are the ones that you can quickly always get at and tighten and loosen because they're the ones that you use to take the mask off and on most of the time so hopefully the video has been useful for you